we'd like to talk about the, the concept of the pre-punch size for an extrusion tool compared to the result when you run that extrusion tool. So here we have an example of the paperwork that we send along with an extrusion tool along with some examples of different pre-punch sizes and the different results. The paperwork says what the desired pre-punch size or the, the uh, sampled pre-punch size is. We say in this case 0.067 inches. That achieves with this tool a 0.228 inside diameter and achieves what we consider to be the maximum height for this extrusion. So the result when we look at that on the sample, the 0.067 pre-punch gives us this extrusion result, which we consider to be the maximum for this tool. And we can see it's starting to break out across the top. That's kind of what we're looking at when we say that's going to be the maximum. If you reduce that pre-punch size from the 0.067, make it smaller, then the, it's going to try to form higher and it's going to start to break out and be an unacceptable extrusion. So that's with the 0.067 pre-punch. If we were to go the other direction and use a larger pre-punch, we'd find that the extrusion height would get lower. The inside diameter is going to stay the same, but the height will get lower. And that's what this is showing with a larger pre-punch. Here we have now a 0.18 pre-punch, and we can see it's considerably lower extrusion, not the type of breakout that we saw on the previous sample, but considerably lower. It's still the same inside diameter, the 0.228 inside diameter is the same, but the height is what has changed. Because of the larger pre-punch, we get less height. With the smaller pre-punch, we get more height. So that's the general concept with the pre-punch versus an extrusion height and the result of the extrusion. I hope that helps explain it. Give us a call if you have more questions.